Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel and to today's video, which is going to be a get ready with me video, tattoo, story time kind of thing. <laughs> um, so yeah, so I'm going to do my makeup. I'm not wearing anything at the moment um, and tell you a little bit about some of my tattoos. We'll see how many we get through today. We might have to split it into like a part one and then a part two. Um, but yeah, also I'm going to be trying a new product today during this get ready with me. Um, so it's not going to be a review, but I'm just going to be using it. And that is the Odin's Eye uh, Alba palette. So it's this one here. Let me just show you. How is their cat hair in it literally already? It arrived yesterday. So it's really pretty, kind of like fairy tale kind of packaging on here. And then has a big mirror, so let me just do that. And then this is what what she looks like. It looks a bit more vivid actually on the camera than it does in real life. It's a little bit more subtle in reality. So I have this, which we're gonna be playing with, and I also have one of their uh, lip stains, which we're also gonna be playing with, plus obviously other other makeup. Yeah, so if that sounds interesting and you'd like to hear more about my my tattoos, <laughs> please keep watching. All right, guys. Oh, for those of you who are new here, hi, I'm Carolyn. Welcome um, to my thing, channel. Yes, YouTube channel. That's what we're doing today. There we go. <laughs> All right, so let me go ahead and zoom you guys in a little bit. We're not going to go like super, super into the face. Because this is not a tutorial, this is not a demo video, this is me getting ready uh, while while chatting with you all. Okay, it's not very zoomed in, but I want to be able to like put pictures of the tattoos up on the side, so, so that's where we are. So I'll be kind of like, eh, eh, here, <laughs> on the side, most of the time. Um, also, we're going to be trying the Melt Hydro Grip Primer for the uh, face makeup today, so let's see... Let's see how that goes. So I got my mirror right here. Where's my cat mirror? Very important. Okay, so hi. <laughs> um, so obviously I will talk, the whole point is to chat about my tattoos and stuff, so I'm not really gonna focus on any of the products that I'm using, so it's just me, me talking to you guys. Um, but if there's anything product related, I will say so as we're going through. Um, so before we talk about tattoos, we have to talk about how flipping hot it was in, in London, in the UK yesterday. Um, so I'm filming this on Saturday. I don't know when it's going up, but I'm filming this on Saturday. And yesterday, I think they said it was nearly 38 degrees um, centigrade Celsius. And um, that's 100 degrees Fahrenheit. And that is like ridiculously hot for the UK. Last summer, we were definitely getting that hot quite a bit. I wasn't in the UK last summer. I was in Greece uh, working. Um, so I thankfully missed that and had air conditioning the entire summer, which was amazing. Um, how hot is it in the room right now? So it's 25 in this. There's a thermostat right here. It's 35 in here right now. Um, so I'm feeling pretty, pretty sweaty already. <laughs> Sorry, it rhymed. Um, Okay, I think that's better. Sorry, I just had to change the lighting a little bit, guys. Um, so today's a lot better. We're gonna go for a walk, um, either around lunch or after lunch um, today. I, don't, I have no idea, so at some point. And uh, yeah, I think it's only gonna get to like 27-ish today, which, sorry, I can't remember what that is in Fahrenheit. I think it's like 80, like around 80 degrees. So that seems like quite, quite okay. I don't know, it is. Anyway, so for me, it's too hot. It's too hot. I'm no good with the heat. I can't tolerate heat very well. I get really... Okay, try to fix the lighting one more time. That's it. We're done. Um, I get really grouchy when it's hot. I just can't... I just can't do it. Um, so I feel bad for anyone who's around me. Uh, so yesterday, I just kind of melted. Like I just was a puddle on the ground for most of the day me and the cats and now the sun is back out and now it's too bright. Sorry guys. Sorry if this video is already a mess. It's uh, I'm hot. I'm hot and I'm grouchy. Um, anyway, so yeah, so it's been way too hot. Way too hot yesterday and already today is feeling too toasty for me. I, I have a problem with hot weather. I know this is not related to tattoos, but it's, it's you know, it's topical. Um, it's like with cold weather, you can always put on more layers. Like you can always put on another jacket. You can always like go snuggle under a duvet, right? 
there gets a point when it's hot and you're just still trapped inside your meat suit and there's nothing you can do about it. And <laughs> that's how I felt yesterday. It's like I was having cold water, I had the fan on me all day, and it was just, it was just too much. Too damn much. Okay, anyway, that's, that's enough about the hot weather. The whole point that we're doing this today is to chat about tattoos. So I got my first tattoo Actually, this year, it will be 20 years exactly from getting my first tattoo. I got my first tattoo on my, I think it was on or like the day after, my 18th birthday. Um, so at the time, when I was 18, I was living in New Mexico um, and in Albuquerque. Um, that's in the States, if you are not from, from the States, that's in, uh, on the, in the deserty kind of southwesty region um, and I was turning obviously 18 which is the age that you can legally get tattoos in the US I think you can possibly get them younger with parental consent I'm not really sure but it was the the youngest age that you could go and actually and I know she's gonna be watching this um, <laughs> my mum was the one who took me to get my first tattoo and if I'm understanding her her justification for this correctly it was like I'll take her to go get it. It'll be so horrible that she'll never want any more. Backfired, mom. Backfired. <laughs> just wait another five or six years and I'll be nothing but tattoos. Um, anyway, so I'll just pop a picture up here while I'm chatting to show you uh, what my very first tattoo was. So remember this was 20 years ago. So what was it? Yeah, the year 2000. That's when I turned 18. Um, and you know, it was a it was a slightly different time for for tattooing, and uh, Japanese characters Chinese characters were really popular at the time, and that's what I ended up going with. But I did draw these myself, at least the initial the initial drawing from them. Obviously, then they, um, I think he redrew them a little bit and etc. It wasn't a very talented tattoo artist that I went to, but. It's fine, I kind of understand a bit more about how to pick and choose tattoo artists now, but I didn't at the time, you know, and it was a friend of the family, and so it was kind of easy then. Um, but I drew initially the design for the for the tattoo, um, and it's these two characters, which together, um, the word is an, which just means eternity. So I just thought it was cool. <laughs> so actually, it was going to be down my entire spine, the whole thing, because I had, like, I wanted like a whole phrase that I had written. I'd already been studying Japanese by that time. Um, I was in college already. Was I in college? Yeah, I just started college um, and I already been studying Japanese and stuff. And so I thought that that would be, I wanted something kind of meaningful. So it was actually gonna be like a really long phrase in Japanese, but I chickened out because I was scared. I was like, oh, this is gonna hurt so bad. What am I gonna do, you know? And so I decided to just kind of trim it to those two characters because I thought that, that would be kind of the most, you know, they're the most important one. And that also, if it hurt really bad, then I wasn't in for it for very long. And I don't think that tattoo took very long, probably like an hour tops, half an hour. I mean, it's a really quick one to do. Um, and if you look at it, it's just like really simple make a line, fill it in, nothing exciting. It was just all black. Um, so that was my very, very first tattoo. Thank you, mum. Um, it was a very wonderful 18th birthday present. And it did stay my only tattoo for quite, quite a while, at least a year. Um, I eventually, and I'll just put up the full shot of the whole tattoo now, I did get it added onto um, a couple of, I think it was a year or so later with a third character and that is Dream, um, is the third character there. Um, and I got it done because a friend of mine wanted to get a tattoo and she was really scared. And so I said, well, I'll get one done with you at the same time or around the same time so you don't feel so nervous about it. So that's why I got that one done and it just kind of was part of the... It wasn't exactly, but it was kind of part of the phrase that I originally had wanted to get kind of down, down my back. These shadows work really, really well, guys. They're really smooth. Really pretty. Sorry, a segue, but they're nice. I'm happy with these so far. Um, I think I'm just gonna go for like a purpley, soft purpley look today. I was thinking about putting some yellow in there, but I don't think I'm gonna do it. No, I'm not going to. So yeah, so that kind of, this represents like my first tattoo, really my first foray into 
into the world of tattooing. And it was only about a year or two later that I got my next tattoo, and then that's how it stayed for quite a long time. Um, so yeah, so I had those ones, the characters, and then I was working at, I was still in Albuquerque, still living in Albuquerque, um, and I was working at a, at a bookstore while I was going to university. Um, I'm just gonna put a tiny bit of glitter glue kind of on the eye there so I can get one of these uh, really pretty shadows to shimmery things to stick to it. Um, so, my finger. So I was working in a bookstore, so I worked, I worked full time while I was going to university. Um, so that's, it took me a little bit longer to finish my degree. I think it took me, uh, I'm gonna take five years, um, instead of four because I was working full time. And um, also I kept on changing my, my major until I finally settled on, on what I did. Um, so, but I, it was because I had to work. Um, so I worked at uh, the bookstore and then I switched it up and I ended up working at a stationery store selling wedding invitations. So anyway, if you would like a history of my, my careers at some point, we can, we can go through that. But that's, um, hmm. Anyway, so I was working at this bookstore and a colleague of mine who's there was kind of an aspiring tattoo artist, I guess, would be the right, the right word for it. So she was kind of learning, she had her own kid at home, see where this is going, right? And um, she wanted to drum up some business, so she offered me a deal on getting this tattoo, it's the one on my shoulder here, so I'll just pop the picture up there. Um, I have a little like sore on it for some reason, I think it was a pimple and it looks a bit weird, but anyway, that's, um, that's what's going on. And um, so she gave me a deal so that I would be kind of like the, I don't know, the guinea pig? <laughs> and then if other people liked her work that they would go and do more tattoos with her. Um, which it did work, and she got quite a lot of, of tattoo business. Um, she eventually quit tattooing and is now a dentist, I believe. We all change throughout our lives, right? Um, so yeah, so I actually got this done at her house, um, or her apartment, I think it was, at the time. These are really pretty, guys. Sorry, look how pretty this is. Um, and... <laughs> You know, a lot of the tattoos, you know, you think, oh, what's the meaning to this? Why, you know, what's the story behind it? And there's just really nothing behind this one. It was like, I saw it on like, I don't know, a pack of like, do it yourself tattoos, like, you know, like stickers or something like that. And I thought it looked really pretty and I liked it and I liked the positioning of it. I think it comes down to the fact that I'm not, I don't want to say I'm not a creative person, but I'm not... I can't think always very creatively about like tattoos and placement of tattoos and things like that. And so it looked good. I liked what it looked like. And so I asked her to do something like that for me. And, and this is what she came up with. Um, I've since seen the same design on like lunch boxes and like kids toys and stuff. So it's a bit embarrassing now. But at the time in the early 2000s, these kind of tribal tattoos were really popular. It was the trend at the time. So I don't regret the tattoo, but I am probably gonna get it at least partially covered up um, eventually. The same with the back tattoo. Um, it's my goal eventually to have a full a full back piece done, and um, those just don't really fit in with that that aesthetic anymore. So I don't think my tattoo artist is watching, but um, I might ask you to have to cover those up. So I, at this point, I had these the tattoos on my back and then the tattoos on um, my shoulder. And that was it. And actually, that's how it stayed for a really, really long time. I just had those, nothing else, until actually just a few years ago, with the exception of one. So uh, let me just clean up a little bit under my eyes. Those shadows worked so nice. They're so pretty and soft. I really like them. OK. So in, so this was all in the early 2000s that I got the tattoos done, obviously. And then my next one I got done in 2008. And I remember the year because I had already moved here to the UK, but I was going back to Albuquerque to visit. Um, I was doing some of my PhD research, actually. I uh, kind of made sure that the stuff that was in Albuquerque worked well for what I was trying to do. And uh, my friend at the time was getting married. And so I went there to be her maid of honor and then to um, also do my PhD research. And so what we decided to do, and we thought it would be fun, is to all 
all get, I don't want to say matching tattoos because they're not matching, but like themed tattoos. And for one of my friends, it was her very first tattoo. Sorry, let me just do my eyeliner and I'll just come right back. Okay, sorry. Eyeliner done. So yeah, so we decided to get a themed tattoo. So we all got something in this line of, of, of images and we decided to do skelly animals. <laughs> so skelly animals were a set of like just cute kind of skeleton based animal cute stickers and, and little stuff on bags and stuff like that. It's kind of like think of Sanrio characters like Hello Kitty but skeletons. <laughs> and uh, so we each picked a different one and I ended up going with a fox and I couldn't decide where to get it and so I eventually decided on my stomach which I probably I don't want to say never but I don't think I will ever get another tattoo on my stomach in my life it was the most horrible thing ever um, here's what it looks like um, it's a mess um, you know we didn't research the tattoo place at all we just picked one at random in, in Albuquerque you know we went in with some pictures and then you know the guy did his best but the stomach is so sensitive and I just I kept on flinching because it was so painful and actually it's a bit ruined um, there's some mistakes in it it's missing some stuff uh, because it scabbed really badly as well um, I haven't had any problems healing from tattoos since then but that was the one or before but I did not heal well in that one and it created a scab and when the scab came off the ink came off with it um, and so this is something that does happen with tattoos um, especially if you don't take care of it well enough um, in the aftercare and I obviously I didn't so um, it's not a beautiful tattoo I would like to get it covered up maybe even lasered off um, but because it's in such a sensitive reason, region, I don't know if I'll ever have like the guts to actually get rid of it. Um, and I kind of forget that I have it, to be honest with you, most of the time. It's not one that I'm really very aware of because I don't really see it. It's always under my trousers. So it's just it's on the hip bone. It's just kind of there, not doing anything particularly. So do I regret getting it? Of course not. I don't regret getting any of my tattoos. I regret not making better or more sensible choices with where I went, who I picked to go to. And I think it wasn't until I started doing the tattoos on my arms, which we're going to get to in kind of now, um, that I really feel like I was getting proper, proper pieces of, of art done. So, so that was 2008 was that tattoo on the stomach. And then the next tattoo, oh, Betty's outside the door, he wants to come in. Poor Betty. Do you hear him crying? Betty is displeased by being locked out. Um, so 2008, got my last tattoo, and then nothing. Nothing. Until 2016. So all of the tattoos on my arms, I've gotten all of them. All of the ones I've gotten since that are on my arms, I've gotten since then, so it's been within the last uh, couple of years. And I'm trying to think of why that happened, why I didn't get any for a long time. And of course one is is the financial reasons, they're not cheap, and now that I'm in a secure job and, and all sorts of stuff, I can kind of feel more free to do that. But the other thing is, I think it's really, maybe I'm, I don't want to call like myself like a late bloomer, but I think it's a bit like, I haven't felt like I could be myself until much later in my life. So it's only now as I start to get more and more tattoos, Eddie, what you doing, buddy? And start to have fun with my hair and do things like that that I feel more like more my authentic self. And I know that sounds really silly in a way, but it's it feels like I'm more relaxed about doing things, more free about my choices. I think it's weird. I think but I think I don't know. I would imagine that a lot of people change throughout their lives. And it's at different stages of our life that we feel the most at ease with being ourselves. And I think it's really only within those past few years that I really feel like I am at ease or more at ease with, with myself and kind of how I look and how I present out to the world. And, you know, the tattoos have become a really big part of that. I feel that they're my, my way of self-expression through somebody else's art. 
not my body. Um, anyway, so in 2016, I decided to go ahead and get another tattoo. Um, so this was my first one in quite a while, and I felt almost like a like a tattoo noob, like again, because it had been a while, and this was my first one in the UK. Like I had never gotten a tattoo in the UK, so I did my research, and I knew I wanted to get Japanese style tattoos because. Um, if you can think about it, my first tattoo was Japanese inspired, and so that's kind of the theme that I've been been going with since then. And I think it's I have a, a really I don't know I don't want to say connection, but I I love Japan. I love everything about Japan. I speak a bit of Japanese. Um, I've been what, seven times now, um, and um, you know I feel strongly about it. I think that's all I can say, I don't really know how else to say it. So I looked specifically, when I was researching for the tattoos, looked for tattoo studios doing Japanese traditional or Japanese style tattoos. And so I came upon my tattoo studio where, where I've gotten all of the ones on my arms except for one, um, and with two different artists. So I found the studio and I went in for a consult and I felt really comfortable there. It kind of feels like somebody's like... I don't know, like a family place almost. It's very professional, very clean, very cool, but like they make you feel really comfortable and at ease there and I think I, I really appreciate that. So I got, um, here I'll put the picture up here, I got this one done on my arm and so it was supposed to bring about like two different ideas. So the one is the flowers which are called higanbana and higanbana are a type of Japanese, well they're not Japanese flower, they're a type of spider lily a red spider lily and they tend to grow in my birth month which is September um, and they tend to grow around oops graveyards they're kind of like they're flowers that grow at the edges of things they're kind of almost I don't want to say they're like pests or weeds but they kind of just grow where they want to grow and they're very beautiful um, I'll put up a picture here of what the spider lily in real life looks like Higamana. Um, so they're really, really pretty, and I think the association with the grave and with kind of death and also with kind of autumn and my month of birth and stuff, they're just kind of like an important flower, like they had some sort of meaning for me. And so I wanted something with that, and then also I wanted a skull to kind of go with that together. Um, so that was what uh, the artist she came up with, and I'm generally pretty happy about it. I think... Um, there are some areas where the color didn't take particularly well, and I think that was down to me not taking care of it afterwards properly. But overall, it's a really beautiful tattoo. It's all hand, uh, the flowers were all hand drawn on my body. So instead of making a template, um, she just freehand drew them. And that was so cool, and I never had anything like that before. Um, the skull was a template, so she drew it, and then you make a, a simile of it, and you stick it on, and then you go with the lines. So that's how a lot of tattooing works, in case you don't know. is like they draw it on paper, and then they run it through a special copier that gives kind of like a, a paper that they can stick to your skin, and it leaves like a purple impression, and then they just follow the lines. So, so I got that tattoo done, and I think it was really that one that hit this like fire in me to like get all the tattoos ever done. I totally forgot to use this primer. I got in the mood. That's fine. I'm gonna use concealer I haven't used much. It's this Shiseido one. Let's try a little bit of it. Um, so yeah, so after this tattoo, I think is really when I started to get like a bit more like feeling and wanting of more and more tattoos on my body. And so I had that artist and then the, there was another artist at the studio that I really liked his work and I wanted to get a tattoo done by him and that is the the mag uh, yeah the magpie tattoo it's this one which is on my forearm and this has got to be one of my absolute favorite where's my mirror there it is <laughs> one of my favorite tattoos I think it's just so beautiful and such a cool like it just looks like it was like my arm was missing something before it was on there does that make sense it's kind of like a weird thing to say but like it was like once it got put down, it was like that's what was always supposed to be there. I guess. I don't know. So, um, and I got on really well with him, but then again, you know, kind of financial stuff and like desire to get tattoos, I think was kind of like I was ready to kind of finish for a little bit and take a break. And then so it was really last year that I've kind of gone back on like a tattoo spree, so to speak. <laughs> I think that's the best way to put it is a tattoo spree. And um, so then I got my next tattoo, which was my sleeve, this one here. 
And this one took quite a long time. I think we started it in August of 2019 and we didn't finish it until February. And it's not like it takes that long, like it doesn't take so many hours of tattooing, but it's more like how much you want to spend on any given day, for how many hours you want to do, also for um, how long it takes for healing, because you want to leave a little bit of healing in between. So we just kind of took it slowly and did a couple hours about every month to kind of finish it. And so we finished that in February, and then we had booked immediately to start on another one, which is the one that's on my, my arm here. But because of the, obviously, the pandemic situation, we hadn't been able to start on that, so. But in the meantime, over Christmas, I went ahead and got another tattoo while I was in Japan. And that is this one here. This is Betty. <laughs> Done. Um, and this one's different than all the rest of them. So my tattoos that I've been getting here in London are done with a normal tattoo needle, a tattoo gun. Um, and this one, the cat one, I don't know why I'm pointing, you can't see this one. This was done uh, traditionally with tebori, which is where they have like the little wooden mallet and they go like into your skin. Um, and I really wanted a traditional type of tattoo like that. And you know, I'm obsessed with my cats. So I had to get, I had to get Betty on my arm. So got that one done really enjoyed it um i was told it was gonna be a really really painful process i didn't find it particularly painful it was pretty fine um, what they do is the line work is actually done normally with a, a, a gun um a tattoo gun but the inside all the coloring is done with this traditional kind of tapping tape body kind of thing which you can still see I mean, i'll put a picture where it's really zoomed in here you can see the tracks still from the tebori needle going over the skin and it's going to take a little bit longer for them to kind of completely go away it, it does it takes a bit of time oh i should tell you about the sleeve and about what it what it is <sighs> i need to like get something cold to drink after this i'm very sweaty i don't know if you can tell now that i have makeup all over my face but i'm pretty sweaty so my sleeve um i knew i wanted to get a sleeve done but i actually didn't have much inspiration for it so I had to talk with my tattooist a little bit and have a think. The only thing I knew I wanted was birds. And the birds that I picked specifically on here are sparrows. And I picked like a Eurasian sparrow. So one that looks, that's more common um, here in Europe and specifically in Greece, um, because Greece is, is really important to me. It's a place I've been quite a lot for work. And I think it's a, a place for me, which can be quite healing. And so I wanted to incorporate those cute little cute little sparrows somewhere on my body and when you're doing these traditional tattoos like this one which are sleeves and stuff they tend to, you have to have you don't have to you're supposed to have a seasonal theme to them there's a lot when you look at like Japanese um, cultural gener culture generally there is quite a strong seasonality theme to things like haikus always have to have a seasonality word in them Japanese tattoos have seasonal themes in them so and you want them to always complement each other so we went with an autumn theme and these little purple flowers here are called kikyo which are little flowers that bloom in Japan in the autumn period and I definitely like this fact that I have the green leaves, the purple flowers and then the brown birds and I think it just looks so pretty all together it's just a really lovely compliment um, and I love them they're so cute they're little faces um, he did an amazing job with them um, so I'm really happy with that one so the most recent one which I just got uh, obviously it's only the outline is only a couple of weeks old right now um, this one is probably I know in a weird way it's probably the most meaningful one um, so far for me and it might not seem like it, but there's a really important kind of connection story with that one. And I don't want to like over, over detail it, but it's based on, I'll show you the, the book first. So it's based on this comic book. So this is a comic or at least an illustrated story by Neil Gaiman, who is one of my favorite authors of all time. And I can almost directly blame him for me being in the UK because of his book Neverwhere, and I think that's the book that really like inspired me to want to live and, and be in the UK. So he's an important author for me. And this book, or this illustrated book that came out, um, it also has one of my very, very favorite Japanese artists, and that's Yoshitaka Amano. So Amano, if you look at some of the pictures, let me just pop another picture up here. 
what you'll see is that they probably, if you've ever been into gaming, they look familiar. And that's because Amano, uh, he does the artwork for Final Fantasy. So he's an incredibly talented artist. Um, he doesn't do comic books per se, he does illustrations to accompany stories and or just concept art and things like that. So he's pretty incredible. And I've been a long time fan of his work. And so this book, it came out 20 years ago, actually. And I've loved it. I have a first edition hardback copy of it back in Albuquerque still, um, which I eventually will need to pick up. Um, so you have one of my favorite authors and one of my favorite artists together in one book. So that's already amazing. Then the story is such a beautiful kind of, it's a romance, but kind of a twisted romance and it's very sad and it kind of fits in well with like the Japanese, you know, not always a happy ending to storytelling kind of thing. Sorry, I just have my lips to do, but if I'm talking to you guys, it doesn't really make sense. Um, so I would suggest picking this up. They have re-illustrated it now with a more contemporary, I think, a Western illustrator. It's not going to be for me. The story is still beautiful, but it's something about those illustrations with it that are so important for me. And so you have this book, and it's also Neil Gaiman. He also was the author of the Sandman series, and that is something that me and my mom share, and I remember reading them when I was younger, and she was really into them. So for me, this is kind of like, it's author and artist that I love, but also something that kind of will remind me of my mum because there's that kind of connection in there. So here's what it looks like so far. Here's what the tattoo looks like. This is a stain, by the way, so I'm just going to put a little bit on and then kind of buff it onto the lip. Okay, and that's the, that's the stain on. So here you can see that it's kind of a fox and a woman together and they're separated by a mirror. And the mirror is part of the story, the fox and the woman are part of the story, so it's kind of my tattoo artist interpretation of something coming out of that, that book. So it's like, it's his art based on it. And that's why I like it, because it's kind of, it's all, all the things all together. So where this tattoo is going is that we are going to have, um, it still has a couple of elements that need to be drawn on and line work done. And so that'll probably be the next stage. And then we're gonna move into the color. So it's gonna have quite a lot of different colors to it. It's gonna be kind of, I don't know, what's the right word to say it? Like, it's gonna have bright vivids in it and also really cool colors for the fox. It's gonna be kind of a white fox with blues and cool tones. And I think it's gonna be really an incredible piece of art by the time it's done. And I can't wait to see what it's gonna look like because um, my artist, he drew it all on me. So like we didn't have like a, a template that we're working from. It's kind of his inspiration as we move forward based on the colors from the story and based on what he thinks is going to look good. All right, so the face is all done. I think we managed to get through all of the tattoos, so that's pretty good. Sorry if this was a super long, long video. I think it all looks great. It's all cream products. I didn't put any, um, whatchamacallits, powders, no powders at all. Um, I love this eyeshadow palette, guys. I'm sorry, this is, works really, really nice. I'm gonna have to do a whole bunch more looks with this, but this ace so far. Otherwise, I'm pretty happy with how it looks and I think I'm ready to go film another video now. <laughs> anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. If you have any questions about my tattoos or if I was vague about anything and you wanna know more, do let me know if you want me to do another story time about something cat related or work related or anything like that. Suggestions, comments down below, awesome. <laughs> Would love it. And yeah, that's going to be it for today's video. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, you can hit the like button down below. Oh, I should zoom out, shouldn't I? Whoa! I am zoomed out. You can hit the like button down below. You could subscribe. Come hang out with me again. Um, I'm going to be going on holiday soon, so I'm hoping to do a bit more filming during then. Maybe do some pre-filming so I can actually have, like, a schedule that's regular. <laughs> Rather than just, like, eh, I feel like it, and then a video goes up. All right, everyone, take care of yourselves. Have a really lovely day wherever you are, and I will see you in my next video. Bye-bye.